Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be building a no video card needed PC. Now, this is going to be version 2 because about a month ago, I built one with a 4650G. But now, I've got my hands on a more powerful APU known as the Ryzen 5 5600G. Unfortunately, these are only available through OEM, so I did have to pick this up on eBay. But on paper, the 5600G does look like a great option if you're looking to game right now. We have built-in Radeon graphics, 6 cores, 12 threads, and you know, if you're happy with the performance it puts out, you can go small form factor with it. I recently did a 5700G build, which was really awesome, but we don't have room for a GPU. So with this one here, we're actually going to build it so later on down the road, once GPU prices come down, we can throw a dedicated video card in here and up that graphics performance. So what we have here is the Ryzen 5 5600G, 6 cores, 12 threads, base clock 3.9 GHz with a boost up to 4.4. This also has built-in Radeon 7 graphics at 1900 MHz, but we will be doing a little overclocking. As for the motherboard used in this build, I went with the ASUS B550 Prime. This is actually a decent little motherboard, and right out of the box it will support these 5000 series APUs. We also have a 1TB Enlin NVMe SSD. And when it comes to RAM and these APUs, the faster the better. So I actually went a little overboard with this and picked up some Viper Gaming running at 4400 MHz right out of the box. It's going to be running in dual channel and we have 16 gigs of it. Usually what I do is pick up some 3600 MHz RAM because it's much cheaper and then overclock that to 4000. I needed a few extra fans for this case so I just picked up some RGB Asia Horse 120mm fans. A smart 500 watt thermal take power supply. And since I got this APU from eBay, it didn't come with a cooler, so I went with the White ID Cooling SE224. This will be more than enough for these 6 cores and 12 threads, even if we want to do some overclocking, which we will in this video. Now, if you wanted to get out cheaper, you could always pick up a Rosewell case with an included 400 watt power supply for around $60. And that's actually going to bring the price way down, but I already had one of these Dark Flash DLM22 cases laying around, so I figured I'd go ahead and use it. These are some of my favorite, and I think it's going to look pretty decent with that tempered glass and the RGB fans I chose to use in this build. All links for everything I'm using are going to be in the description. I'll also leave links for an alternate build down below. This isn't going to be a full build video, I just kind of want to get this thing together, but if you're interested in seeing a very similar build go together, I will leave a link to the original video I created with the 4650G build. It's a very good performer, and basically we're using the same parts minus this faster RAM and the case, but uh, I kind of go over everything going together in that video. So yeah, this went together really nicely, I do love these white and black builds. I opted for these RGB fans, but like I mentioned, if you want to get out cheaper, I would go with a case that already includes a power supply. You don't need any of this fancy stuff here. But I would at least suggest getting a decent cooler, because once these 5000 or even 4000 series APUs are overclocked a bit, they do pull a lot of wattage. And when it comes to these RGB fans, they are fully accessible, so you can change the colors on them. This is just kind of what it looks like as soon as you boot it up for the first time. And yeah, I think it came out looking pretty decent. We have plenty of room for a GPU down the road once those prices come down, but we can game on this right now because we have those built-in Radeon graphics. So let's go ahead and jump right into Windows 10. Okay, so here it is. I'm running Windows 10 Pro. Got a lot of stuff to test out here. As you can see, we have that 5600G. I did go into the BIOS and I overclocked this to 4.5 GHz on all six cores. Remember, the base boost clock on this is 4.4, so we're over that boost right now on all six cores. Uh, for memory, we have 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 4400 MHz and the built-in Radeon 7 graphics. And again, a little bit of an overclock here. Stock on this is 1900 MHz, and I've set this up to run at 2300 MHz. Now, uh, yeah, there's just a lot of stuff that I want to get into, so first up, let's check out some benchmarks. When it comes to Geekbench, looking pretty good, but remember, we are overclocked to 4.5 GHz on all six cores. Single core, 1433. Multi-7176, which is outstanding for a 6-core CPU. Next up, we have Cinebench R23, total multi-core score of 10,992. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark. First up, we have Night Raid with a total score of 18,459. Firestrike came in with a 4,269. And finally, Time Spy with a 1,633. For integrated graphics, these are some amazing scores here. But these are benchmarks, and now it's time to see how this thing can really game. 
first up we have Warframe 1080p medium settings and we got an average of 69 FPS. I recently tested this on the 5700G with slower RAM and we got the exact same result. So this is doing a great job. Moving over to Forza Horizon 4, 1080p, medium, low mix, we got an average of 68 FPS out of this. Fortnite also performed really well, we're at 1080p, in performance mode, high settings, we got an average of 115 FPS by the end of this run, and I have seen it jump up to around 150 FPS, but after everything was said and done and I checked out the afterburner logs, we averaged 115. Here we have Call of Duty Warzone. We are at 1080p low settings with dynamic resolution scale turn on to 64 FPS. So it's trying to keep that 64 FPS there. But as you can see, it does have to dip that resolution way down to keep up. Street Fighter V, 1080p, 100% resolution scale at medium settings, it's going to do a constant 60. Overwatch 1080p medium settings, we averaged 85 FPS by the end of this run, and uh, yeah, I mean it looks great at 1080p, by the way we're at 100% resolution scale here also. Valorant is just one of those games that's really easy to run. 1080p, high settings, we averaged 134 FPS. GTA 5, 1080p, normal settings. After about 25 minutes of gameplay, I averaged 68 FPS in my afterburner logs. And uh, yeah, I mean, this APU can run GTA. I wish we could go up to high with it, but unfortunately, we just don't have enough raw GPU power. Here's Dirt 5 with no dynamic resolution scale going. We're at 900p low settings and we averaged 53 FPS. If you want to get this to run at or over 60, you will have to turn on that dynamic resolution scale. But uh, again, just like we saw with Call of Duty Warzone, it will dramatically decrease the resolution. And finally, Cyberpunk 2077, 720p, low, 80% resolution scale, we averaged 52 FPS. So yeah, these AMD APUs have definitely come a long way since the second generation, let's say the 2200G or the 2400G. With the 5600G or even the 5700G, we have plenty of CPU power for basically anything we want to run. It really comes down to those integrated graphics. But with video card prices the way they are right now, you could put something like this together in game now, like you saw in this video, and then later on down the road, throw something in here like a 1660 and dramatically upgrade the performance. But overall, I'm really happy with the performance of the 5000 series APUs. They have definitely come a long way, and it's only going to get better with the 6000, 7000, and 8000 series. But right now, we're sitting at the 5000 series, and if you want to build something like this, I will leave links in the description. 
I will have a full emulation video coming up soon, so definitely keep an eye on the channel. But if there's anything else you want to see running on this machine, just let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.